Ho, ho, ho. Happy holidays. And welcome to this special edition MC Commute. I'm your host, Santa Claus. And today we're going to be riding to a very special place on Honda's 2021 Trail 125 ABS. So let's load up the red sleigh and go for a ride. Ho, ho, ho. Well, everyone, there it is. Honda's 2021 Trail 125 ABS. This motorcycle was first shown in concept form at the 2019 Tokyo Motor Show. Honda decided to re-import this motorcycle back into the United States for the 2021 model year. Now, the Honda Trail 125 represents the fourth motorcycle in American Honda's Mini Moto lineup. You have the Grom, you have the Monkey, you have the Super Cub C125, and now we have the Trail 125. Now, Honda has a long history of making these trail motorcycles. They first introduced this motorcycle for the 1961 model year. This represents the fifth iteration of Honda's trail. Over the course of many decades, if you can even believe it, Honda has sold over 725,000 of these trail motorcycles in the United States. As a kid, I grew up riding a Trail 70, so it is awesome to see this motorcycle returning to action in America. I love the thoughtful design of the bike that pays homage to the original bike, but has modern features like the LED lighting, the super premium red paint, and the exquisite craftsmanship that only Honda can deliver. But enough talking about this motorcycle. We have a box filled with Mattel Hot Wheels that we are going to donate to the Toys for Tot charity in Southern California. So let's hop on this bike and see what it's like to ride. All right, guys, a mechanical key that is different compared to Honda's Super Cub, which has an electronic key fob. I prefer the simplicity of a mechanical key. Press the starter button. We are in neutral. This motorcycle does not have a manual clutch. The clutch is of semi-automatic design. You notch the shifter into first gear, and away you go. No shifting. You let the machine do all of the heavy lifting for you, which is totally awesome in my opinion. Right away, sitting on this motorcycle, well, you could see that its frame is of a step-through design, so it's very easy to swing your leg up and over this motorcycle. Much like Honda Super Cub, these vehicles are about as easy as it gets when it comes to learning how to ride or riding on the public roadways here. The seat height is a little bit taller than the Super Cub, but I wouldn't say that the seat height is ridiculously tall at all. This is still a very easy machine to stand flat-footed at a stop, even if you are a smaller human. Handlebar has a relatively tall rise, uh, which is nice because a lot of people who are going to be operating this vehicle are going to be bigger than children. So it's nice to have that, that adequate handlebar spacing in terms of height. We haven't had a chance to ride this vehicle off-road, but just considering the the elevated handlebar, that is going to be a favorable thing when the going gets tough out in the dirt. The foot assemblies are low and nicely positioned. It's easy again to, to stand flat-footed and it doesn't require crazy contortions to ride this motorcycle. Just a very easy, mellow bike to ride. The left foot peg, however, 
the distance between the foot peg and the center stand or I'm sorry the heel shifter is a little bit close so you really have to just mind your left foot and make sure that you are not feeling lazy in terms of your foot placement because if you let your heel drag too low it's going to actuate the heel shifter one of the reasons why this motorcycle has a, a heel shifter much like a big cruiser would would because is because back in the day the original trail had that feature so honda wanted to retain that signature uh, shift feature which is nice speaking of shifting in the transmission we discussed this is a semi-automatic transmission so the clutch mechanism does the actual clutch work for you all you have to worry about is selecting between one of the four cogs press the shift lever down and that down shifts press it up and it up shifts a handy neutral light lets you know when you are in gear I like the semi-automatic application of course I love using a clutch but not using a clutch is awesome too because it just adds for greater simplicity I'm a big fan of scooters and just not having to worry about working the clutch is awesome especially on a vehicle that is designed to be ridden on the street this trail 125 ABS is powered by a 125 cc overhead cam air-cooled single this is the same engine Honda uses in its Super Cub 125 fuel injection electric start take all of the worry out of engine running and getting it started there is also a Kickstarter so in case the battery dies you can always get the motorcycle started via the Kickstarter on the right hand side of the vehicle which is always cool this motorcycle pumps out right around 8 horsepower not the fastest thing on the road but it is capable of cruising at 51 miles per hour top speeds right around 59 miles per hour so you cannot legally operate this vehicle on the freeway on the interstate here in the state of California you have to have an engine displacement over 150 cc to be able to operate a vehicle on the interstate system and this motorcycle does not comply with that rule so this thing's confined to city streets only now a little bit history about the trail 125 so way back when in 1960 American Honda had just been incorporated here in the United States and they were selling a 50 cc street bike well a dealer in Idaho had been selling an astronomical amount of these 50 cc street bikes they had actually been converting them putting knobby style tires and a bigger rear sprocket and these people would buy these bikes and ride them off road they'd ride them off road to go hunting and fishing on and the semi-automatic transmission just allowed folks to get over obstacles that they might not be able to get over if they had to use a manual clutch because sometimes that operating a vehicle with a manual clutch over uneven terrain can be difficult so that motorcycle simplified the experience the dealer in Idaho shipped the motorcycle down to American Honda American Honda took a look at this motorcycle and they were like wow we need to start manufacturing this motorcycle they sent a letter to Honda Motor Japan and in one year Honda Motor Japan had introduced the 1961 trail motorcycle which allowed motorcycle riders and outdoor enthusiasts to get outside 
without having to spend a lot of money. Now, as a kid growing up in Minnesota, I actually, my friends and I would ride a Honda Trail 70. Uncle Dave, who was an uncle of one of my good buddies, Tom, had a cabin in Wisconsin. So when we were kids, we'd go to the Uncle Dave's cabin, you know, while he was sleeping, we'd steal his keys, open the garage, and take all of his motorcycles and ATVs and ride like wild boys through the woods. And the Trail one, Trail 70 was one of those machines we would ride. And those things, my God, the thing would take a beating. Every summer, we would just wail on that thing and ride it through the mud, ride, hit trees, just ride like, crazy people and the thing just kept on ticking so realistically that trail 70 was my real first taste of motorcycling fast forward to today and we are here on the 2021 honda trail 125 abs pretty neat story i think so back to the vehicle compared to the super cub this vehicle has a little bit more front suspension travel the ground clearance is a little higher and there is some engine protection to protect the underside of this air-cooled single the wheelbase is also a little bit longer I think a half an inch longer than the Super Cub but still the wheelbase on this motorcycle is under 50 inches which is a stark contrast to the Fury which we test rode last week that had the longest wheelbase of any Honda motorcycle ever manufactured. So obviously this Trail 125 ABS rolls on 17 inch wheels, spoked wheels with IRC tires. This motorcycle is designed to be ridden off road you can ride it in the trails we haven't had a chance to ride it off-road well not in its current iteration but I have no I bet this thing will do just fine off-road we rode the Honda's monkey off-road many years ago and that thing performed well and I would totally assume this thing to perform well too twin twin shock absorbers provide damping at the rear and this motorcycle glides over the terrain very well soaks up the road stuff rough stuff and just delivers a generally pleasing ride for a 125 cc mini moto of course it's nice and skinny so we can just get through all these people and get to the front of the line where we belong we're santa claus after all Now, a simple circular LCD panel keeps tabs on the vehicle vitals. We have a big speedometer, a fuel gauge above that, which keeps tabs on the 1.4 gallon capacity fuel tank. The fuel tank is located beneath the rider's seat. You can flip up <clears throat> the rider's seat via the key, which is accessed underneath the the left side fairing here very easy to do there is no passenger seat option on this trail 125 this is a single rider vehicle only i think in honda europe they offer that as a possible option but here in the united states we don't have that option no biggie. I like this backlit screen. I like the white numbers on the black background. That is my favorite thing. Kawasaki really was the one who started using that type of display on its motorcycles and some of the other manufacturers have followed suit, which is awesome. Definitely a clean look. Now, this motorcycle doesn't have a charging port but you can purchase one as an accessory so if you want 
to be able to charge your devices. You could purchase that as an OE accessory. I believe it plugs in right there and then you can charge your gadgets and doodads. LED lighting on this motorcycle, which is awesome of course. So the LED lighting helps you stand out on the road. I love the big square turn signals which are another tip of the hat to Honda's original trail and I really like the aesthetics of this motorcycle for $3,900 gosh this thing it's almost you'd want to buy it and just look at it just put it in your living room and just have it of course the performance is nothing impressive but just its its appeal and its style and just its nostalgic history just make it one of those bikes that you totally would want to have in your garage and for $3,900 it's not going to break the bank it's worth noting that this vehicle is made out of Honda's Thailand factory owned by Honda and that is where this motorcycle is made. The fit and finish on this bike is rather high. This doesn't look like a chintzy bike at all. Well guys, we're almost there. We're going to the Toys for Tots location here in Southern California. A little bit about the Toys for Tots charity. It was started by Major Hendricks in 1947. Major Hendricks was part of the United States Marine Corps Reserves, Reserves. His wife had made these dolls. She made a whole bunch of dolls to give away to kids, but there was no charity to, to give them away to. So under Mr. Hendrick's wife requirement, he started the Toys for Tots charity in 1947. A famous guy, one of his buddies, Walt Disney, Mr. Walt Disney, crafted the first crafted the first logo for Toys for Tots, that chair logo. So very, very neat story. Annually, Toys for Tots gives away 17 million toys to less fortunate children. If you wanna know more about Toys for Tots, hop on the interwebs, toysfortots.org. Great charity. A lot of charities have not been open during this COVID-19 pandemic. Toys for Tots is not one of them. They get it done in spirit of the United States Marine Corps. Where there's a will, there's a way. They get it done. Back to the Trail 125, 1.4 gallon fuel tank. Honda says it is good for 100 miles per gallon, which is a ton of range so if you buy this motorcycle you are going to be able to cover some ground on it even though the top speed is only 59 miles per hour all right guys here we are approaching the toys for tots charity drop-off location in southern california Guys, we're gonna hop this thing because we're on a trail 125 and we can do whatever we want. Thanks, man. Just right over here. And here we are, guys. Toys for Tots Charity on Honda's awesome trail 125 with the center stand. Santa Claus has brought some toys for Tots. Where may I put them? Great. Great. Very nice. Merry Christmas, everyone. Well, guys, there it is. Honda's 2021 Trail 125 AB. S. I do like this bike. It's a trip down memory lane for me and I really like the aesthetic and the attention to detail Honda put into this motorcycle. Little things like the 3D emblem 
next to the frame headstock other touches like the Honda insignia on either side of the engine cover just like the original bike look at that swept back exhaust very aesthetically pleasing motorcycle from Honda all right guys let's do some quick Q&A on the trail 125 does this bike need ABS? We didn't talk about it, but this motorcycle has front ABS, one channel front ABS, no rear ABS so you can slide the back of the bike. I, It doesn't need ABS. In my opinion, no motorcycle needs ABS. You need to learn how to use the brakes properly, and once you do that, no bike needs ABS. But still, that said, it's always nice to have ABS because it takes the worry out of things. And a lot of people, it takes years and years and years and years and years to, to cultivate the necessary experience you need to actuate the manual brakes with perfection. And ABS just eliminates that, that experience and education. So ABS is nice, but in my opinion, it does not need ABS. Is this the most fun you can have on a Honda? Well, not really, but it's one of the coolest looking Hondas that you can buy for $3,900. So that definitely fits the bill. How many miles can you get on a full tank of ga gas? 1.4 gallon capacity fuel tank located underneath the rider seat. Honda claims 100 miles. So let me pull out my calculator. Just joking, 140 miles is what Honda says you can get on a tank of gas. Santa Claus didn't ride this motorcycle 140 miles this time, so we'll have to take American Honda's word for it. Let's do another one. Can it go off-road? Yes, it can go off-road. Of course it can go off-road. The original trail series of motorcycles that were introduced in 1961 were designed to go off-road. This is a dual sport motorcycle. Now you're not going to be jumping off rocks on this thing, but you're going to be able to get to some surprisingly tough places on this motorcycle. Standing on the peg, pegs, how's the reach for us tall dudes? Will we need risers? Well, we mentioned that in the beginning of the video. The handlebar is fairly tall. Handlebar risers are always a nice thing for really tall people, but realistically, the setup is fine for the type of off-road riding you're going to do on this bike. This is a mellow bike for mellow off-road riding. If you have to talk about bar risers, you should be probably buying a different motorcycle. Does a six-pack fit in the back? Yes, a 24-pack will fit in that plastic crate I have. You know, 24-pack of soda water. I love soda water. Available second seat option for an additional rider not in the United States. We talked about that in the video earlier. Earlier, That accessory is only available to Honda Motor Europe customers. All right, guys. Oh, that's a good one. When they came out in the late 60s, they were $399. Speaking of price, this 2021 Trail 125 ABS retails at $3,900. Not the most expensive Mini Moto in Honda's lineup, but the second most expensive behind Honda's Super Premium Monkey. Would I spend my $3,900 on this Trail 125 ABS? Well, like the Fury, if I had a bigger garage, I would. And I would because I like the aesthetics of this motorcycle. I like the ability to spend $3,900 and have a very high quality motorcycle that I can run errands on, run around town, put stuff on the back, look cool, live the, remember my childhood and just remember, you know, all things that are awesome about motorcycling for only $3,900 with Honda's legendary build quality, this motorcycle will run forever. So yes, if I had a bigger garage, I would purchase this thing just because it is so aesthetically pleasing and it's affordable and I just plain like it. Well guys, that's a wrap. Make sure to surf on over to MotorcyclistOnline.com. For now, that's where all of my content is being published. So check out that website. Thumbs up this video if you thought it was great. Thumbs it down if you think it was stupid. And we'll see you next time. See you guys later.